Hi, gorgeous. This is episode number 46. And we are having back on the show the amazing coach Nick. Hi, this is Coach Nick, and you are listening to Heart Cells Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy. Before we dive in deeper with Coach Nick, and he's going to tell us how he actually conspired with the universe to help him close a deal, um, hop on over to christineschlonsky.com and sign up for the empowerment notes. That is my weekly newsletter where you get all the updates on the recent podcast episodes, as well as amazing, empowering content to inspire you, motivate you, and to take your business to the next level. I'm very happy to present Coach Nick again. And in case you have not listened to the last episode, Coach Nick marries the science of sales and influence with spirituality beautifully. His unique ability to take complex processes and present them in simple, actionable steps that have translated into bottom line results for his clients are his gift. Well, I am so excited to have you back on the show. Welcome, Coach Nick. Thank you so much. It's great to be back. Oh, my goodness. The first interview was so much fun. And I loved especially how we finished off where you explained the um, sales skills through basketball. Uh, that you need to learn how to dribble the ball. You need to learn how to make the shot. That obviously, if you're not the super pro, you need to move towards the other side of the court, That's taking true. your client with you to then ask if they want to work with you. And then also the last part is like, how? what do you do after the shot? Like, how do you deliver? Um, so I would be curious about like, what was your very first sale in your life? What was the very first thing you've ever sold? Okay. Okay. What comes to mind, I was uh, in grade nine and I was involved with break dancing. So I was a break dancer between like grade seven, eight and nine. And uh, I remember I was, uh, we put together a, a break dancing team or crew. There was about nine of us in this, in this break dancing team. And I remember saying, it'd be cool if we got sponsored. Like it'd be cool if we got some clothes or something like this. Yeah. And I learned a lot about sales in this time of my life. Now there's a beautiful saying that I learned called ignorance on fire is better than intelligence on ice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right? I love that. yeah. And, and I found it to be very true, right? Sometimes we want to be so smart about what we do, but we're not doing anything actually. And someone who doesn't know as much as we had, but they're on fire they are, you know, they are, they're going to do better just because of that energy that they're bringing. So we were definitely ignorant on fire. So I remember we came home from school. I got dressed in like the nicest clothes that I could have myself and my buddy. And we went to the mall and we went in and out talking to managers at the mall, trying to find sponsors of clothing stores for our break dancing crew. Now, we didn't get very far and we didn't really know. Again, ignorance on fire. We learned a lot that we, we can't just walk into a mall store and say, hey, give us some, give us some clothes and we'll, uh, you know, we'll advertise you. But we had the general idea. And so what was interesting, though, and I, I always, I really, you know, this is a little bit maybe on the, I guess, on the metaphysical or spiritual side. I always know that if I'm putting out the effort, I didn't know this at the time, but I 100% I know it now, is that if you put out the effort consistently, it's always comes back to you and not always directly, but it always shows up in some other way. Well, maybe three, four days later after doing this, we were doing a, a breakdancing session within the hallway of our school. And a couple guys walked in and they were older gentlemen and they walked in and they came over to us and they were like clapping and cheering us on. And then when we were done, they said to us, hey, can we talk to you guys? And we're like, yeah. And they're like, we have a, uh, we have a brand new clothing company called All Game. And we're actually, we're break dancers and we're into sports and all this stuff. And we would love to sponsor you guys and have you guys wear our clothes 
and if and and we'll even get you guys into some competitions because you're really good. So we ended up uh, closing the sale with these guys. They ended up sponsoring to us, and I'll tell you, you got to imagine like we're like 14 years old, and they sent us to our first break dancing competition, all decked out in their all game gear. We had a friend that we their their parents owned a limo company. We got a limo company to sponsor us as well. So we showed up to our first, you got to imagine, nine 14-year-old boys showing up to their first break dance account. Everybody's in their 20s and 30s and, you know, they're like, you know, experienced. And we show up all decked out in our sponsors and in a limo. And, and we showed up to this break dancing competition and participated. And that was the first sale that I, that I consciously remember making. And I remember like gaining a lot of confidence that, oh man, if you just go out there and ask people, you'll, somebody will help you out. And you know, that's stuck with me ever since. Yeah. What an amazing story. I mean, I love it. And especially with like the luxury part that came to it, right? Yeah. You felt that sale, you got like such a big reward that, you know, it probably like wired your whole, like each and every cell in your body. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, I like, I, and it's funny cause I haven't really thought of that memory, but when you asked it, that was what came into my mind. Yeah. And so I just went with that story. It was like, oh, wow, that must have had a deeper impact than I even was aware of till this very moment because it really did because now I'm having all these other triggered memories about how we would go to class. Like, okay, another sale I made with this breakdancing crew was that there was these community dances that they would put on. And I remember we would get into the dances for free because – we would we talked to the organizers and said, look, we're a dance crew, and if you want, every dance will come and we'll actually put on a 15-minute, you know, breakdancing show as part of the dance. And people loved it. And we became these little community stars, these little community celebrities, dancers, because and we would and the, the dance organizers themselves would sponsor our tickets. Because we would actually drive, um, we would promote the dances for them because we would say we'd be promoting there and we started helping them fill up these community dances. And again, I, and I never equated it to sales. Like if you would have, I didn't have the language I have today to yeah. say, oh, I'm getting sponsorships and sales. And, but that's what we were doing and we were doing it just out of our sheer enthusiasm for what we were doing. We just love break dancing and we wanted to do it as much as we could. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So do you also remember like the first time you got like a major rejection or where you like lost uh, a big opportunity? Hmm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So in my, from my break dancing days, I eventually evolved Uh, again, ignorance on fire is better than intelligence on ice. So I started my very first, officially I started my first business when I was 17 and I started a, um, a, a, a ceramic, I was selling ceramics in a flea market and w um, I got a booth in the flea market and I did horrible. I think I was losing about a thousand dollars a month. I got $5,000 from my parents to start this business and I lost it in about five months. <laughs> and, uh, and I was 17 years old, but, um, uh, and I, I worked a summer roofing job, one of the worst jobs I've ever had in my life to pay the money back, but I paid it back and you know, I kept rocking. But one very important lesson that came out of that was the guy next to me, said to me, uh, the, the booth next to me, he was a really nice guy. And, you know, he said to me, Nick, whatever you do in your life, get residual income. He says, do you know what residual income is? And I said, no. He says, well, it's when you do something once and you get paid over and over again. So he says, you're selling ceramic. So you sell a ceramic, you get paid, but now you have to sell another ceramic to get paid. So you're consistently having to do that. He said, I, he was selling satellite TV subscriptions. He says, when I sell a satellite TV subscription, they pay every single month and I get percentage of that monthly payment. And so I equated it to what I knew in my world. So I said, oh, like a rapper. 
a rapper, you know, puts a song on the radio or creates an album, but every time they get, you know, sell or get played, they get paid. And he's like, that's exactly it. So I decided, and again, ignorance on fire. I was like, oh, cool. Well, I'll rap then. (laughs) (laughs) I'm laughing because I have no musical talent. Like I have no business to be in the music industry, right? But I'm really good at promotion. And I really realize as if you listen to some of the rappers today, uh, you'll know that it doesn't take much talent to be a famous rapper. (laughs) So I, I, went and I got a little microphone and I recorded a microphone and I recorded three songs and they were horrible. And I went again, ignorance on fire. I went, walked into some of the biggest labels in, in, I mean, uh, in Toronto, Canada at the time at, you know, universal and BMG and was like, here's my demo. You know, who do I talk to? And, you know, I quickly learned that it wasn't going to go down like that. (laughs) And so essentially I sent my demos out to all of these labels and I followed, made my follow-up calls and um, only one guy responded. And he was like, look, man, this is horrible. <laughs> and I, my heart just sank. And uh, he said, this is really bad. This is not very good. He said, however, though, you seem like an enthusiastic kid. And uh, if you want, you can come down to the studio and, you know, I'll sit with you for an hour and just teach you a few things about how this business works. And so I went down and I, I actually went to the studio. So that was my big no. That was my first real rejection that I heard. And it still turned into something because he actually sat with me for an hour and taught me a few things about the music business that I later on implemented in different ways. And just an FYI, uh, I cut a record. I eventually did get a distribution deal uh, mm-hmm. and I recorded a $30,000 music video. I toured across the country. It took me about four years of learning how to um, breathe, how to time rhythm, how to learn notes. I taught myself how to rap. I should say I taught myself. I had great mentors, but I paid. So again, I'm determination, persistence, just a, a, a unwavering willingness to do whatever it takes. Um, you know, and if you have that, you'll be successful. So that was my big, my, I guess one of my first big rejections that really hurt because I was really excited about what I was doing. And he was just like, this is horrible, (laughs) but I'm happy it happened. Well, I'm happy you got over it that you got something great out of it at the end. So it's still a success story. Um, So tell me if people feel like they're kind of losing their enthusiasm a little bit and they might feel like they've done everything possible and it's just not really working and it feels so exhausting. Like what what would you recommend they do? Yeah. Well, first of all, um, know that that's normal, right? Like, you know, I felt like that too. So, you know, we've given a lot of stories and such here, but, uh, but the reality too is, you know, the other side of the coin is I've had times where I've wanted to quit. I've had times where I've wanted to pack it in. I've had times where I felt like, geez, I'm doing everything that I know how to do and it's not working. So first of all, remember that uh, learners are earners. Keep learning. Mm. Never stop learning. Keep reading. Keep attending seminars, webinars, work with coaches, mentors, you know, whatever you got to do, keep learning. Because learning excites us naturally when we learn something we naturally get excited like, oh, I've learned something. And it it gives us enthusiasm because it gives us new realms of possibility. So oftentimes what I find that is if you just chill out a little bit and learn something, that learning will inspire a new idea and kind of reunite your enthusiasm. Keep reading, keep learning, keep listening to this podcast regularly, like make it a habit because it will continue to fill you with new ideas and excitement and inspiration. So association, association means who you're listening to or surrounded by. Sometimes you can't associate with people physically. Maybe, you know, maybe your family is aren't entrepreneurs. Maybe, maybe you've got some, even some negative people or, you know, some doubting people around you. There are so many things available between podcasts and YouTube and books. I mean, the internet has really changed the game. You can really get great information. Um, You just got to be willing to, you know, plug in. So my, my biggest advice is stay plugged in to some personal development um, plan. 
make sure you're plugged into the podcast. You stay plugged in consistently. Get inspired by those who are doing, uh, sharing their stories, and that will keep your enthusiasm ignited. Um, make that a daily habit because as you feel the ups and downs of growing your business, you know, you're going to have some highs and some lows. That daily habit will take you through the lows uh, and will also make sure that you don't get too caught up in the highs either. Again, stay unattached. Um, I think I said this in the first uh, half of the podcast or our first episode, which is stay unattached while you're working because mm -hmm. you're going to have ups and downs. I, I compare it to driving a car you know, sometimes the road get bumpy, but it doesn't mean you're not going to reach your destination. It just means the road's going to get bumpy. The other thing I would say to you is, is develop long-term vision. If you have long-term vision, then you won't feel the day-to-day -day bump so much. If you know I'm going from point A to point B, keep your eye, keep your mind's eye focused on point B. And then the day-to-day -day won't hurt as much and you'll get through those tough times. So don't be hard on yourself. Everybody goes through those tough times. But if you're stuck, it's just because you, there's something you're not, you don't know yet. If you need to know how to get to the next level and you're like, I don't know how to get there, just and say to yourself, I don't know how to get there and always have a student attitude. If you always have a student attitude, you'll always keep an open mind and keep learning. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. It's so, so important. So I, I came across a lot of these heart-centered entrepreneurs and um, especially like healers and coaches who have also the fear of like not really being able to make it, right? Mm. They, it feels like really tight. And um, so if they go with that attitude, like they consume great content, what, what else could they do to kind of turn it around? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, get into action. You know, I think the best cure for that is action, you know, get, um, so again, you're consuming great content, but then act on that content. Um, real knowledge is experience. So you can listen to this podcast and say, Oh, okay, great. This is nice. Or I'm inspired, or maybe you've got some ideas, but then take it and move it. So for instance, uh, here's a really practical strategy. Okay. First of all, if you don't know who your ideal client is, identify your ideal client. If you're having a hard time, just go with whatever you think is your ideal client, right? Again, leave the perfectionism out of the, just get started. Get on Facebook. Add three people per day to your Facebook page or your, your personal profile and network with them. When they, ex uh, when they accept your friend request, send them a private message, say, hey, thanks so much for connecting with me. Uh, maybe I noticed, let's say your, your market is, you know, healers. So you'll add three healers per day, you'll send them a message, and you'll start connecting and developing conversation. In that conversation, ask questions like, hey, um, you know, uh, are, if, for, for, I'm just using my example, I'm a sales uh, a coach for, for healers and coaches. So I'd be like, hey, are you building your business mainly online or offline? A lot of people say, actually, I'm building offline, but I'd really like to build online. And then I'll say to them, look, I help coaches and healers generate sales online without using ads. Would that be of interest to you? And if they say yes, I'll invite them on a free strategy call so we can talk about what we do. So get into action. And a simple action you can take is get networking. Networking doesn't cost you anything. So you don't need any financial startup to get on Facebook and start networking and driving conversations. Conversations equals conversions, exposure equals magic. Meaning, get out there, start having conversations, and those conversations will start to lead to opportunities, I promise. Hmm. Yeah, beautiful. I, I really like that the action taking part is so important because oh, yeah. we don't get delivered you know, the dreams to, to the couch we're sitting on. <laughs> so <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> it's really uh, uh, important. Yeah. So could you share something personal with us that people might not know about you? Oh, something personal that people might not know about me. So we already um, said that you like, you prefer the yoga mat over the, the gym. <laughs> yes, yes. I do prefer the yoga mat over the gym. I am also, um, so I'm an initiated member of the Hare Krishna order. So I have a spiritual practice called Bhakti Yoga. 
And I'm what's known yeah, mainly as a more popular name is called Hare Krishna's. And uh, if you're around in the late 60s or 70s with George Harrison and the Beatles, you'll, you'll know the Hare Krishna's. So I am an initiated member of this order. And this particular spiritual practice, we use mantra meditation to bring our mind under control. And I would highly recommend everybody take up some type of meditative or yogic practice to help um, get their mind under control. The other thing too is I'm specifically a disciple of, uh, of a gentleman named Bhakti Marj Swami. He's also known as the walking monk. And he does marathon walking and he encourages us to walk as part of our practice. So some things that a lot of people don't know about me is that I do long distance walking, two, three, four hour walks at a time. And this really energizes me. It's not only good for the physical body, it's great for the mental body and it's great for the soul. Your body is meant for trekking. You're really meant to trek. The body is meant for walking. It's one of the best exercises you can do. And uh, with physical exercise, your, your vibration or energy is naturally lifted. And when you bring a high vibration or high energy into your work, there is a more, more results will be experienced. Yeah, yeah. That's such great advice. And I so agree. I always realize when I make the time and I go into nature, it really feels good. Yeah, absolutely. Spending time in nature, eating good food. You know, success yeah. isn't about, it's, success is a lifestyle. Mm, yes. It's not just what you do, you know, when you're on the clock in your business. It is really a lifestyle. So taking, you know, health is your greatest wealth. Because if you don't have your health in order, then it's hard to have the energy to do the sales activities and, and do everything that you want to do throughout a day. So make your health a priority. I really make my health a priority. And uh, I really believe that's why I'm having the success that I have. Yeah. Can you share a mantra with us to kind of round it up? A mantra? Like, a, like the mantra I use in my meditation or just oh, whatever a, mantra just you whatever? Do. Okay. Okay. I got a nice one for sales. Okay. And this is a nice one. Okay. It's, it goes like this. Some will, some won't. So what? Next. And I like to do it to a little bit of a, a, a rhythm, you know, like I like to go, some will, some won't, so what? Next, some will, some won't, so what? Next. And this mantra helps you go through the late great uh, business philosopher Jim Rohn said, what you lack in skill, you make up in numbers. Meaning you got to be willing to talk to lots of people to get the few yeses, right? So similarly, uh, some people are going to work with you. Some won't work with you. So what? Just keep moving and you'll be all right. Awesome. What a beautiful finish of this amazing episode. Thank you so, so much for being here. So I'll let people know where they can connect with you. Yeah, best way to connect with me is go to my website, www.coachnickspeaks.com. There's a free class you can take called Selling Authentically 101 and all the rest of my social media outlets you can get from that site. I hope you had as much fun as I did with this interview. And you probably could say, well, Coach Nick is just the lucky devil. But I tell you, once you are aligned, once you know exactly what you want to do, you have clarity and focus, the universe will help you to manifest once you started to take that action. So I hope you got a lot out of it to stay up to date with all the latest episodes with some empowerment for your inbox, hop on over to christineschlonsky.com and sign up for the empowerment notes. And on that page as well, you find all the resources that we talked about, the transcript, the show notes. So have a look and check that out as well. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world and bye for now.